Hi there, Serial Trader here. Uh, let's check in with the major US indices. There's certainly been some significant actions in the last video. All right, so I've made just a couple minor adjustments to this daily chart. So uh, still coming out of our uh, intermediate degree wave four triangle and still working our, uh, you know, what could be a terminal impulse wave before a major market top. Uh, now what I've done is I've just adjusted minor wave three to be our most recent peak instead of this one down here. And then uh, I've made this larger decline that we've had now uh, counted as minor wave four, which would still imply further upside in minor wave five to complete intermediate degree wave five and then, you know, uh, cycle wave five uh, and, and so on, or sorry, primary wave five and so on. Uh, so really just kind of a adjustment to the overall wave count, but really the same message here. Uh, short term, obviously the message has changed a bit since the last video. Let's go to the hourly chart. And initially, um, you know, there was this three wave decline and I was, uh, you know, anticipating, well, that, that could be just the pullback right there. And we're going to work our way up the new highs. And we got really close, uh, went as high as 29.39.86, and the actual high was 29.40.91, so failed uh, just under the highs, a bit of a double top, uh, if you will, and then we had a good dump today, obviously. Uh, but the overall pattern, okay, uh, looks like it could be a uh, just a three-wave decline, right? And obviously a deeper three-wave decline uh, than this initial one, which was actually just part of a, a larger corrective structure. Um, so as long as we can basically uh, serve, serve as a bottom today, I'll just uh, throw the parallel trend channel in here. And okay. So obviously we got through that uh, lower boundary line on an intraday basis, but you can see we closed uh, fairly close to it. And just to uh, put some uh, Fibonacci relationships to look at. So this initial decline off the uh, failed swing high. So the equality relationship was just above 2,900. And then the 1618 was uh, 2,878. So we didn't quite get down to the 1618, although uh, at one point I was suspecting we might because it was just tanking, tanking, tanking. But then we did get a good bounce there, so that was uh, nice to see. Uh, so as far as the wave count goes, um, you basically got a 3-3-5. Three, three, uh, so I'm going to still entertain that that's kind of a variation of a flat pattern. Three down, three up, and then uh, you know possibly five down. So we're still gonna entertain that we just have an ABC down, just a larger one like this. Um, now, of course, this could be wrong, and uh, well, sure, we'll go with um, that. Should be good. This could be an ABC down and we and we just start going up here very quickly. And we certainly got initially a good bounce. Or we might actually be starting a trend change. And uh, you know, maybe we got our five wave decline. So I'll just uh, get rid of the ABC down. And uh, now I don't like this because the, the subdivisions for a five wave decline just aren't there. In fact, you know, it looks like we have an initial three wave decline here and then some sort of corrective three wave advance here. Uh, this is definitely, you know, a good looking um, third wave candidate. No doubt about it. Um, and then obviously we'd need a, we'd need a wave four. Uh, although we already, did we get overlap here? Let's see, 29, 2903, 28. So we've already been as high on the bounce as 2903, 72. Uh, yeah, so see this just doesn't even work because we already have the four, wave four overlap. 
so that's why I really just can't embrace that we have an impulsive flyway decline underway. Uh, still uh, far more likely that we just have an ABC down and that we're going to be heading higher here, uh, possibly, you know, right away. Uh, certainly the bounce got off to a good start near the end of the session there. So we'll have to see how this plays out. But, uh, I mean, certainly overall on this daily chart, you can you can definitely make the case that we're, we're looking toppy here. And, uh, I mean, we definitely are. But I, I still respect the uh, short-term wave patterns a lot. So until I see a real clean five-wave decline, I can't really embrace a big trend change here. Uh, now, I did play the bounce here on SPX. Well, I guess I'll, I'll rewind a bit here. So from the last video, we had this pivot. And that was at 2903.28 on the you know SPX cash index. And I got into the futures, used my uh, stop just below that level on the futures. Mm. And we did work our way higher, okay? Now I did trail my stop up. And I believe at one point uh, I had my stop just below this level. This uh, 29.1791 uh, on, on SPX. On the futures, I believe it was, uh, yeah. Well, roughly the same 29 17 50 in the future so I had my stop just below that and then when we came down um, I got stopped out and still had a profitable trade and then okay we were dumping we were dumping so I didn't do anything too crazy now when I saw that we were getting oversold on our hourly RSI here and as soon as I see uh, hourly RSI in the you know mid to low 20s on SPX I get pretty excited for a, a bounce play so I scaled into some futures down here and actually uh, going to the Thinkorswim uh, platform. I scaled into uh, some spy calls too. And let's see, I uh, an average price after scaling in of uh, $1.17 on the uh, 280, uh, 280 strike calls expiring tomorrow. And they're currently trading in around 205. So, uh, you know, not quite a double, but, uh, you know, a good uh, 80% or 80% or so um, gain on those calls. And also some nice gains on the futures as well. Um, but I exited, uh, I exited the positions close to the end of the day because uh, until proven otherwise, it could just be an oversold bounce. So I was happy to make some quick money there. All right, so on the candlestick chart here on SPX, um, you know, definitely got below the T-line. Three T-lines crossing below the T-line. We closed below the 20-day simple moving average, but very long lower shadow of, uh, you know, buying the dip there. Didn't quite hit the 50-day moving average, which uh, at one point I suspected we may have, but we didn't. And uh, still overall, as I showed on the wave chart, so far just a three-wave decline. Uh, so I do expect uh, a bullish resumption here. But... Certainly could be proven wrong, and if that's the case, and we do get a clean five down, wait for that three wave correction up, and then you know look for a bear trade. But I don't think we're there yet. We'll have to continue watching. Uh, so yeah, kind of a reversal candlestick today. Definitely a long lower shadow, but not a confirmed buy signal by any means. Uh, okay, so on the Nasdaq Nasdaq Composite. So Nasdaq Composite, I think, is interesting. Um, so we definitely have just a three-wave decline on the NASDAQ composite. You see, I drew this parallel trend channel. We're largely contained within that. In fact, bounced off nicely intraday. And also the equality relationship between this initial move down and this corrective bounce up. So if we got an A down, B up, AC equality came in at uh, 78.48. We went as low as uh, 78.33 on the composite. So pretty much nailed that equality relationship and then re started reversing off of it. I had the 1618 drawn in there in case we went down there, uh, but we didn't, so I'll remove that. And, but that being said, we did close well below the T line. We closed below the 50 day simple moving average. Uh, so we need to pivot here if this is actually going to be a, you know, correct to move down that leads to a further advance. Now, if tomorrow and, you know, next week we really start breaking down out of this channel. Now we can, you know, entertain that we have a one down, two up, and we're down, you know, in a, in a wave three in progress. Um, but so far, reacting off that equality relationship and the uh, lower boundary line of the parallel trend channel. 
So we're at an important, uh, you know, turning point in the market potentially, or uh, which I think at this point is uh, a little more likely. We're just gonna, you know, lead to further, further gains after putting in a, you know, larger correction than a lot of people anticipated. Okay, now Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is another thing that's kind of a feather in the cap of the bulls here. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average certainly declined today, but not nearly as much as the other two indices and actually couldn't even close below the T-line. You see this long lower shadow rejection of lower prices and we still closed above the T-line. Uh, we did kind of have this gravestone doji uh, signaling uh, at least a short term reversal after we made new uh, intraday and closing all time highs on the Dow uh, just yesterday. Uh, amazing how much one day can change, right? But yeah, certainly the Dow holding up the best uh, as it's the only one that closed below its T-line. All right, and the VIX. So the volatility index, uh, a little threatening today. So if I zoom in here, this most recent resistance level on the VIX, we had that at uh, 1563. We got above that intraday, we got to 1584. So VIX was uh, starting to break out um, but then we largely rejected that on a closing basis and currently not looking overly threatening uh, unless VIX can really get a sustained run and really start breaking you know the next resistance level which would be here at 1686 uh, then VIX will actually start changing its own trend so we have a, a high and then we have a you know higher low lower high lower low um, lower high, now a higher low, and now a higher high. So very, very short-term trend change on the VIX, but still not convinced unless we can really break out uh, above some more significant resistance levels. So yeah, interesting time. Could be looking at a significant pivot here on the markets, but not overly convinced just yet. All right, uh, so that should be good for now. Uh, Serial Trader signing off.